If you don't know what Evil Wizard is, it's a top-down action RPG with Metroidvania elements where you play as a villain that was defeated when heroes stormed his castle and wrecked it. We had to rediscover our powers, kill heroes, fix up our castle, and get sweet revenge. This is a humorous game which could be hit or miss because of our character, Evil Wizard. It's a fourth wall breaking character like Deadpool. And it has timely pop culture references and has cute little easter eggs sprawled throughout the castle. The game offers some accessibility options to make it easier or harder depending on how you want it. I used it in some capacity, but some of the fights do have some challenge to them, even if you make the game a little bit easier. This title has 46 achievements and it is a gold standard in achievement design. I applaud the developers of Rubber Duck Games for doing such a great job. Exploring the castle, fighting bosses, hidden secrets, finding duck collectibles, Various combat-based achievements. Let's get, let's get started. First off, with the combat ones, there's one where you have to have an enemy kill another enemy, which is probably the first one you're going to get. There's one for 300 total kills. Uh, don't worry, it'll happen pretty early on. We get to impersonate Leonidas with kicking 10 enemies off the map into the water, which is pretty easy in the spot I did it in. Exploring the castle, we will end up getting to the first boss where we need to kill them without getting hit, which is easy. If you turn down the enemy health in the accessibility options, I highly recommend you do this with the first boss because the later bosses will get harder and they have ads in them, like minions and stuff, or or with uh, attacks that are more difficult to dodge consistently. Early on in this game, the combat is pretty easy. The enemy attacks are well telegraphed. The wind-up animations are well done. But don't worry, when you're fighting multiple enemies and uh, later elemental enemies, that will require some focus. The other mechanic in combat is you can execute enemies, and when you execute an enemy, you regain some health, and there's an achievement to execute 50, which will come naturally. In each area of the castle has chests with some ducks in it, and our friend Rubito will unbind them to see what they get other video game characters or other pulp culture characters. These are pretty well hidden, but if you ever played a game before, you'll know where to look and try the things. Each map has some puzzles or hidden areas, but since this has some Metrovania elements, some areas are blocked off until we get some more powers. In the storeroom area, we come across an arcade machine with a mini game where we have to dodge and shoot some enemies and score over 5,000 points. This was fairly challenging and I died a bunch of times. Sometimes so close to my goal, but try after try after try, I finally got it and we received map progress, a duck, and a wicked, wicked crystal, which is used for some upgrades. We will come across saving our dog. As we progress, we come across Gregor, the Witcher type character, who has bounties for monsters and we end up having to fight five optional bosses. They would end up dropping upgrades for our elemental spells, like this Dr. Jekyll and Hyde one. Once we clear out a map fully, we get an achievement, and what is good about this game is once you grab all the chests in the area, the map will leave a 100% stamp on it. So when you find those ducks, you can take them back to Rubido to see who we get. Some are related to achievements themselves for getting certain pairs of characters like Kratos and Master Chief, or Darth Vader and Obi-Wan. Further into the game, we come across this really cool parody of a Pokemon boss battle, which is no slouch even with those accessibility options on. Three Pokemon to beat, then a phase with all three of them where we had to fight the trainer. Really enjoyable fight, I thought it was unique and funny. Eventually, you'll come across the character Clapback, ro the robot, which gives us various tasks killing enemies with various different spells or killing different type of elemental enemies. Once you do all those tasks for him, you'll get to open up the Coliseum, and oh boy, this is definitely a hard part of the game. Various waves of enemies, and each time it gets harder. I died a couple times, but with some practice, I got got it while almost dying to the boss here. When executing enemies, you'll get Blood Crystal, which is used as currency for the upgrades. But before we do some upgrades, let's be a bully and knock 
Igor off a ladder. We end up fighting more bosses like this Ezio knockoff Assassin's Creed one, which is pretty fun and killing more optional bosses and grabbing some more ducks along the way. Certain areas have some puzzles or interactive spots like in the patio. I knew we had to do something with this wall because it doesn't look right. And if you try some other spells, you can see where it'll clip off. Uh, I was up for a while, but I, then I tried something and it worked. Stuff like that makes this game so satisfying. Another one is the lab door puzzle in the laboratory. I was doing it wrong at first, and then I, then it clicked, and I figured it out. Defeat a couple more bosses and some duck cleanup. Then I found myself under roof, not knowing how to get across, but then I tried a spell, and it revealed some hidden platforms. And I was like, wow, that's embarrassing. It rewarded me with the last duck I needed and something I was wondering where it was. Throughout the game, you'll find some medallions and you need three of them to open a certain door in the main hall. Turns out it's where the devs of the game are. Talking with one of them gives us a cheat code that gives us an achievement, which is neat. With having every duck, I just needed to upgrade everything to the max. I didn't really have to grind for that. And then it's off to the final boss, the hero that started it all. It was kind of a pushover, but turns out there was one more boss left, the gamer. I chose to side with Evil Wizard, and with that, I got the 46th achievement once that boss battle was over. In all, it took me over just 9 hours, and I really enjoyed the game. Really good map design, A++ achievement design, all of the easter eggs and multiple moments said, wow, that's cool, or I had some chuckles here and there. If you're interested in playing this, it does cost 20 bucks, and it's well worth it. it According to the true achievements, I was the fourth to complete it, which was pretty neat. If you liked this video, like, comment, subscribe, and tell me what you think about this game down below. If you're going to play it, uh, maybe wait for a sale, wishlist it, uh, just check it out.